Okay, so today's interview question has to do with prototypes and extending built-in objects. We've got a couple of lines of code here, the starter. If you're looking for this bit of starter code, you can find the link to it down in the description. And we've got a string with punctuation at the end of it. And we want to be able to just take any string object and call the flip method. So we need to add a method to the string object called flip so that when I call this, it's going to take all this text and flip the order of it. So C is going to be at the very end, followed by A, then N, space, I, space, use, and so on like that backwards. Okay, so you need to understand how prototype works, how to extend a built-in object, and bonus marks if you can get it to ignore the punctuation. So instead of having the question mark go to the beginning, have it just ignored and then left at the very end. All right, that's it. So I'll pause for a moment, let you get a, grab a copy of the starter code, and see if you can get this worked out. Okay, welcome back. So, how do we extend a built-in object? Well, we start by taking the object and then going to its prototype object. Everything in JavaScript is prototype-based. The inheritance is prototype-based. There's the prototype chain. Every object has a prototype and it can borrow from its parent's prototype and its parent can borrow from its parent's prototype and so on. So we're gonna create a brand new method. If you look in the documentation in MDN, uh, Mozilla Developer Network, you'll notice that all the commands that are listed, or not all the commands, but a lot of the methods and properties that you have access to, in the left-hand menu, they're shown as object.prototype. the name of the method. And that just means when I do something like this, I am adding this to every string object. My string here, it has access to all of the methods that are on the prototype for the string object. So when I call string.flip, it's calling this method. Great, okay, simple enough. Now, inside of here, one of the um, requirements was it should run with the code provided. So I'm not allowed to change this. I'm not allowed to come in here and say, oh, I'm gonna pass in the string so that I get an argument here that I can use. Instead of doing that, we need to know, well, how do I get to the original string to work with it? Simply enough, inside this prototype method, the keyword this is that object. That is this thing right here. This is gonna be this. So if I run this now, there we go. That's what this is. Great. And I'm console logging the result of this, which is undefined because this function is currently returning absolutely nothing. Okay. Now, let's move on here. Hide this window again, there we go. Now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna declare a variable just to make it easier for me to work with. Put this inside of there. Now, we'll skip over the part with the punctuation first. We'll come back and do the punctuation after. So just the basic flipping of this, all we have to do is then return, I take the string and I call the split method, that's gonna turn this into an array. It's gonna split it. This is no space in between here, so every character becomes an element inside of an array. I end up with an array that has all of this inside of it. Arrays have a built-in reverse method that does a reverse sort on everything. Makes that easy, or not reverse sort, but it just reverses the order of all the elements in the array. And then we call join with nothing in between. And that's what we're returning. Okay, so we'll save it. We'll come back down here and we'll run it again. There we are. It's flipped the order with the question mark also being flipped. Simple enough, two lines of code. And we could have even just done this to make it one line of code. But the bonus, let's look into that now. So I wanna be able to find punctuation. And by punctuation, let's say periods, exclamation marks, and question marks. Fair enough. Um, I want to leave it at the end, so I'm going to need a variable to ha hang on to this, whatever it is, and put it at the very end. So I'm going to return the string plus some variable. Let's just call it end. And just to make sure nothing crashes right now, we're going to make it an empty string, so it's going to add an empty string onto the end of this. Won't change a thing. All right, now I want to find the punctuation. So let's make a regular expression. 
inside the regular expression, I'm going to make one grouping where I include question mark, period, and exclamation mark. There's my whole pattern. This is what I'm looking for. Any one of these characters inside my string. So let's look to see what we get. We're going to call the string method called match. This is going to search for a pattern. And it's going to return either null or an array of matches. We want the array of matches. But because it could return a null, we need to protect our code. We'll use an if statement to do that. So if matches, that means that there was a match. And the array that comes back, the very first thing in that array is going to be the full match. That's going to be the one of these characters, which in our case will be the question mark. So we're going to take our variable end, and that is now going to become matches sub zero. So the first thing in this array is going to be whichever one of these punctuation marks was found. And that's what we're going to put in here. And that's what's going to get appended to the end. But if I run it just like this, I'm going to end up with two question marks at the very end. So I save this and I run it again. There's the question mark that got flipped and there's the one at the end. So I've got the two question marks left inside of here, not at the end, sorry, but two question marks left inside of here. Now, the one at the end got stuck there and then the one that we found got added to the end. So this is the one that got flipped. This is the one that got moved to the end. I want to get rid of the one that got flipped. I want to make sure that before I do this process to flip the order, I get rid of that one. So we're going to use the string replace method. And we can use our same pattern or just that character like that. So we're going to find the question mark and replace it with an empty string. That will remove that extra question mark here from the string before it gets flipped. And then we're adding it back on at the very end. One more time. There we go. And there's the solution. That's the whole thing. All right. So if you have any questions, please feel free to leave those in the comments down below. Again, I have got the link to the starter code in the description for you. And as always, thanks for watching.